What's up, everybody, man? It's your boy, Mr. Duga, coming at y'all with another video, man. <laughs> and today, I'm going to preview and predict Sunday afternoon's big matchup, uh, Super Bowl 52 rematch, as you have the 5-4 and four Philadelphia Eagles taking on the 8-1 and one New England Patriots in Lincoln Financial Field, yo. Um, before I get into this video, man, for everyone, if you want to give me a follow on Instagram or send me a friend request on Facebook, I will have my Instagram and my Facebook information down in the description box. So, um, so come give me a follow on Instagram, send me a friend request on uh Facebook, and um, and come highlight at your boy, <laughs> yo. Um, first, man, looking at the uh the New England Patriots, man. Um, offensively they led by, I mean, what can you say? The greatest of all time, the GOAT, the man who beat us in the in, in the Super Bowl back in the 0405 season, and the man who threw for 500 yards on us in Super Bowl 52, Tom Brady, man, 42 years old. You know, now granted he's not doesn't you know, he's not as strong an arm as he had when he was younger or could put up the quite quite the production on a consistent level as he used to. But, I mean, my goodness, this guy is still one of the best in the game at 42 years old, man, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, in the backfield, you know, he got a guy, a young running back, his son and Michelle, um, Rex Burkhead, and he also got Mr. Catch Everything out the backfield, Mr. Third Down back himself, you know, James White doing his thing back there. Um, you know, tight ends, you know, they leaning more on the veteran Ben Watson as Rob Gronkowski retired. Thank, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, that guy was absolutely amazing. But, you know, they coming in with Ben Watson, who's not a bad tight end, obviously, even though he's getting a little older than the toot. Um, the wide receiver core, man, led by Super Bowl uh, 53 MVP Julian Edelman, um, as well as the new addition, Mohamed Sanu, who had a solid game, you know, last week against Baltimore. You know, um, and I think they rookie to kill Harry is going to play this week. I'm not sure yet, but, you know, we're going to see as the pitch has been waiting for the debut of him. Um, defensively, man, this is a this is a great defense, man, though they may not be as all time great as people were saying before they finally played a decent offense in Baltimore their last game. But nevertheless, it's still a very, very good defense, man. Um, you know, with a solid front, some linebackers led by Dante Hightower, um, Jamie Collins, and in the secondary, man, led by arguably the best cornerback in football, Stephon Gilmore, who was a guy when the Patriots first signed him. For 14 million, you know, you know, they don't pay people that much. But for 14 million, you know, you was wondering, like, I mean, I know Gilmore is good, but is he great? And lo and behold, man, you know, they got their money's worth and more as he's he's great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, taking away top receivers and he travels, man. He he travels with your number one receiver also, yo. Um, also led by safety Devin McCarty back there, you know, who also does his thing in the secondary. Um, you know, like I said, they come in with a record of eight and one. Um, they one loss was their last game to the Baltimore Ravens on the road. You know, they eight wins, even though it hasn't been against world beaters, you know, they have looked dominant in those games. You know, uh, they got two wins against the New York Jets. Um, they beat the Miami Dolphins, beat that, uh, on the road, the Buffalo Bills on the road, uh, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers open again, completely took them apart while Big Ben was still still in the lineup. Um, they beat the Cleveland Browns at home. Um, they beat the, uh, the Washington Redskins on the road, and they beat the New York Giants at home on a Thursday night. So this is a very, very good team, a very dangerous team. Obviously, you know, as long as Tom Brady understands center with the exception of his you know the what the oh uh the o three the oh the o two o three season which is was his what first season after his first super bowl and the o eight o nine season when he tore his a c l the Patriots are contender and in the playoffs and winning their division um and when you look at my philadelphia eagles man um you know, we come in with a five and four record. Um, got a win against the Washington Redskins, the Green Bay Packers on the road on a Thursday, 
the um Luke Folk <laughs> led New York Jets at home and uh coming in with a two game winning streak, beating the Buffalo Bills on the road and the Chicago Bears at home. When of course our full losses were to the Atlanta Falcons on the road, the Detroit Lions at home, and two real bad blowout losses to the Minnesota Vikings and Dallas Cowboys on the road. Um, you know, teams starting to play a little better, man, especially the ground game. The offensive line has been Really, with the exception of the Atlanta game uh, and, you know, the Dallas game, they've been pretty in a little bit of the Minnesota game, even though they wasn't that bad. They've been they've been very good, yo, particularly right guard Brandon Brooks, who just signed the new contract, who has been the most dominant offensive lineman in the NFL up to this point so far this season. Um, also, Land Johnson on the right side, um, best center in the league, Jason Kelsey, Isaac Selmala, who has his ups and downs but starting to play better. And, you know, the rookie Andre Dillard has filled in and done a nice job, though it seems like it's a chance that Jason Peters may return to the lineup this week. Um, of course, quarterback Carson Wentz, man, who, you know, had a cup, didn't play great against Dallas and against – um. You know, and against Minnesota, well, Minnesota, he was okay. But for the most part, he's been pretty solid. You know what I'm saying? Um, receivers haven't helped him at all, man. As our wide receiver core is just really decimated right now, man. Alshon Jeffrey is starting to look old. Nelson Aguilar looks like he doesn't like playing for Carson Wentz. And uh, Mag Hollins is terrible. And obviously Deshaun Jackson, who we had very high hopes on and, you know, showed week one what type of presence he could bring to this offense, not only for him, but opening things up for all our underneath receivers that we have. You know, he's injured. And lo and behold, we go get Jordan Matthews, who, granted, he's better than Mac Holland. So obviously that should be the receiving coach should be a little better because he is better than Mac Hollins. But at the same time, he's not the vertical deep threat that this offense needs, yo. Um, you know, Zach Ertz came alive last game, been pretty quiet this season up until the last game. You know, Dallas Goddard has had a solid season. Um, and the running backs have been coming on lately, man. Jordan Howard is is a bruising physical running back that the Gary Blunt type of running back we had in this offense when we won the Super Bowl. He's been amazing. And Miles Sanders, though, he kind of struggled a little bit with breaking tackles and recognizing where the holes are uh, that's created by the O-line. You know, lately he's been pretty solid as, believe it or not, he's our best deep threat as a receiver, you know, coming out of the backfield. Um, defensively, it looked like we're starting to get a little more healthy. Um, Fletcher Cox looked like he's starting to finally form, you know, into the player that we all know he's capable of being. Tim Jern, again, is slowly coming back healthy. Um, Brandon Graham is starting to come on a little bit lately. And Derek Graham, you know, is, I mean, uh, Derek Barnett, I'm sure Derek Graham, <laughs> Derek Barnett is starting to Starting to show flashes here and there, though I wish we could get a little more consistency out of him, yo. Um, you know, the guy we get from Cleveland, um, Janar Avery, you know, he had a good game against Chicago, man. Hopefully he could pick it up coming in as like a, a, pa a third down pass rusher, getting press on the quarterback. Um, our young linebackers have been okay. TJ Edwards, Nathan Garrett, Kamir Gruje Hill, Duke Riley. Do it. It's a chance we may finally get Nigel Bradham back for this game. And the secondary, though, I'm not a big fan of our secondary. Everyone who follows the channel knows that. But, I mean, Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills do at least give you experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they at least got experience playing against this quarterback in this offense. Um, you know, Malcolm Jenkins starting to play a little better after having a very quiet season up to this point. You know, and Rodney McLeod has been steady, yo. Um, this is going to be a tough game, man. I feel like... The Eagles still have a chance to win this division, obviously being tied with the Dallas Cowboys and having a, once we get through this New England, Seattle home games, having a lighter schedule, you know, right after that. Um, but this is a tough matchup for the Eagles, man. Um, whenever we have the ball, uh, the Eagles on offense versus the Patriots defense, we have to run the football effectively, man. I cannot depend on our wide receivers beating their man coverage consistently. And, and you know Bill Belichick is going to find a way 
to limit Zach Ertz, you know, opportunities. So we, the key to this game is we have to run the football, man. We got to get out there, pound it down their throat, control the clock, play ball control offense, and just really pound the New England Patriots, man, um, on offense. And defensively, obviously, everybody's key to getting to the New England Patriots is getting the Tom Brady. Now, Julian Edelman is great. But the other receivers are not as great. You know, their receiving core is a little lighter than it usually is, you know, especially with no Gronk over there. Um, so the key to this game is Fletcher Cox, you know, getting pressure up front because Brady 42, he's great, but Brady cannot move at all. <laughs> like, if you come around the edges, he could just step up in the pocket. But if you come put pressure on him in his face, he's going to just fold like a lawn chair, yo. <sighs> Which leads to my prediction, man. I believe the Eagles can have some success running the ball, can have some success putting pressure on Tom Brady because their offensive line just isn't as great as it normally is and their receivers aren't as great as they normally are. And I know we can run the ball a little bit. The one weakness of the Patriots' defense has been them stopping the run. But, man, for the first time all season, man, I am really concerned about our wide receivers going up against their defensive backs, man. If they hold up against our run game, I concern with our bit. We don't have nobody to stretch the field, man. Against Bill Belichick's defensive mind, you know, in the Super Bowl, we had a guy like Torrey Smith that at least gives that threat. You know, we don't have that threat in this game, man. I know Jordan Matthews will make the receiving core a little better, but I don't think good enough going up against guys like Stephon Gilmore and Devin McCarty. Not to mention, even though I know Brady doesn't have great receivers and a great O-line, he is st still Tom Brady. <sighs> For the first time, man, I'm actually going to pick my Eagles to drop this game, man. Um, I got the New England Patriots beat my Philadelphia Eagles 24-21. Um, I think we score a touchdown late to cut the lead to three. Um, I just, you know, I'm just having a hard time imagining how we go consistently score, man, with no great receivers against this particular defense, man. Um, but, you know, we still in good position. Um, we need to find a way to split these, these, this New England Seattle game and the schedule gets real light and we get to get more healthier down the stretch. So I think we'd still be in good shape, man. But I think our Eagles fall this week, man. Um, I got New England pitches 24, Philadelphia Eagles 21. But man, I really hope I'm wrong about this, yo. Um, but with that being said, man, that's all I got for y'all today. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. Go on, hit the like button for your boy, and give me a subscribe, man. I'm going to have Philadelphia Eagles and NFL content throughout the year. Also, it is coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Pacific. I will do a live Q&A. Y'all can come on there, ask me anything, tell me anything. Um, also, give me, uh, I'll give you a shout-out and uh, respond to your comments and questions during the live, yo. Y'all come check it out, man. It's some great stuff, yo. But until then, man, y'all have a blessed one. Fly, Eagles, fly.